Welcome, welcome to my weekly podcast where I speak about the infamous Raptors, the Toronto Raptors, and sometimes I, I trickle in a little bit. I mean, the past two weeks, I trickled in a little NBA. Thank you for the support of watching uh, my LeBron one. Um, it was cool. It's cool. I, I just feel like we should appreciate LeBron, so that's why I made it. Now, in this podcast, I don't think I always say this. I always, I always say this. I don't think this one's going to go too long because I don't have much to say. This week, we went 2-1. and one. I I, like every other Raptor fan, would have rather gone 3-0. You know, that Wizards loss was kind of shitty on Thursday. Makes you kind of like cringe inside, but you digress, you move on, you move past it. That's the only thing you can do. And the next three games are, some would say, some hard ones. You have Denver with the all-star, all-NBA potential MVP Jokic. You have the Clippers who are right now they're eight, zero and four, but like they still got Paul George, they still got Kawhi. They I'm not sure if they're gonna have Norm. Um, kind of have West Westbrook. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna be a win for them or I don't know. I they haven't been good, so you never know. Then you have the Lakers who they don't have LeBron, so I kind of feel good about it. Like, when they don't have LeBron, I, I feel good. Still a good Lakers team. I, I generally think it's a good Lakers team. But ultimately, like, you have those three games. And then, like, following Tuesday, because you have basically Friday. You have Saturday, Sunday off, which is amazing. And Monday off. So you have three days off. Then you have uh, Denver. So you kind of feel like this week you can kind of go a little ham. You know, you can kind of try really hard. You have three games. Um, and so you just kind of you keep pushing. Um, you really try to get that playoff push, so you're hoping you land 3-0. You, know, you really hope you land 3-0. You know. But let's even dive in, you know, as we talk about the first game against Chicago. It was a, a back and forth. You know, this whole week has been back and forth. And, you know, I, I don't. I feel like I talk about Raptors fans all the time. So it's kind of pointless to speak about. When it comes to Raptors fans in general, there's, there's not much to say. When we win, everyone's happy. When we lose, everyone is <laughs> everyone's willing to like get the pitchforks ready to to like fire the coach, uh, question Messiah and Bobby. I kind of hate that about Raptors fandom, and I just made a video about like just being a fan in general, which will be released later on this weekend. How hard it is, right? Like, and all it comes down to just us not enjoying the game. Like, we're just not enjoying the game the way we want to. I do want to quickly say, like, in looking at from February 1st, when we lost to Utah, February 1st, the Raptors are, so I'm going to go February 1st first. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's 13 games from February 1st, from February 1st, the Raptors are 10 and 3. This this is a team that everyone's, like, panicking about, and they're 10 and 3. You know, they're really 10-3, and three and, the, and people are just panicking. Now, the Washington game, you wanted to win. You know, against Chicago, like I said, it was a back-and-forth affair. Washington, I think they just showed up. You know, they're, they're home, right? These home, these, you know, facing the same team twice, they're normally just split. Teams are coming back. They're fighting. That's why the way the season is with the splits, and I think I'm going to get into it uh, just now as well. There's just so much, like, parity. And there's so much, like, everyone's so close. Everyone's, no one's, like, there's there's a few teams, of course, the the, uh, the Boston Celtics, the the, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, like, even the Sacramento Kings. New York, like, some of those teams are, like, nine, ten games above five. Uh, but there's so much teams that are one, two games above 500. Like, there's, I feel like, and I, obviously it happens, but I feel like at this time of the season, there is um, no way that we have this much, this much teams with like 30 losses. The 30 losses, there's, there's, there's a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams with 30 losses already. And I, and I could be wrong, but um, there, there's so much. Like you just look at the Western Conference, right? Like I'm just going to quickly do this one thing with the with overall the league. You know, like I said, the, the main focus is the Raptors. And if you listen to any of my podcasts, I go on wild goose chases with my talking because there's just... You know, so much fun talking about the league. And I don't have a lot to talk about. So, 
Yeah, so it's fine. But like with the leak, you know, and this is why kind of going back to my original point is Rapture fans shouldn't be so like angry and they shouldn't just be down in the dump sometimes because like I truly believe that this Raptors team is going to potentially be six seed. I, I do see it. Uh, I don't think the Brooklyn Nets are going to win as much games as, yes, they won their um, their previous game and they came back by like 20, blah, blah, blah. So it's a good story. And Mikel Bridges is like great and blah, blah, blah. But no, I, I don't see it happening. Um, but there's just so much teams. Like, look at the Western Conference, like I was saying. The Portland Trailers are 29 and 34. You know, there's like, they have to leapfrog two of the teams currently. Uh, sorry, three of the teams to make it to the top 10. So does the Lakers. So does like a lot of teams, right? Now, in saying that, they're only a game and a half back from 10th spot. They're ultimately only three and a half games back from 6th seed. The, the, like, <laughs> It's not as, um, it's not as far apart as people may think. Like I don't know how the season ended last year, which I can definitely get to, and tell you what it what it was like. Let's go last year's stats. We're doing this. This may not be a great podcast. Let's go last year. Uh, well, the uh, which I I can believe the 11th seed was like a game from the 10th seed. Right, but the 13th seed, which was Portland Trailblazers again, funny enough, were seven games, and then the East they were see the t- the 10th and 11th were six games apart, because the 10th had a had a winning record, where the 10th seed in the West did not have a winning record. Uh, the Knicks actually would have made it if they made it to the West last year, but like you know, it, it's it's just funny. It's just funny. You know, I should talk about the Clippers. I I didn't make a video about the Clippers. They're a team I should talk about because like. Okay, like, aren't they disappointed? Aren't the Clippers disappointed now? They should be disappointed. I feel like the Clippers should be disappointed. But yeah, so I'm not going to sidetrack. I'm not going to go too crazy with this one. All I'm saying is that, you know, this league this year has been so up and down with so much quality teams. Like, the Wizards, watching them play the Raptors twice, you know, this team isn't bad. I do think Bradley Beal gets a little happy where I think – that team's best option is like, of course, Bradley Beal's your number one, but I think you you make you you really hover the offense where everyone's kind of getting the same amount of shots, and then Bradley Beal just gets like the last shots in case it's a close game, or if this team is back uh, is down, then that's where you kind of go, Przingis, Kuzma, and Beal, one of the the three guys, kind of do their thing, um, but I think it's actually a. <laughs> They fight, you know, and maybe the Raptors team just isn't good. Um, I, it's weird. I feel like Raptors, they just play to their competition. Like, they can play against anyone, but they generally just play to their competition. The Raptors generally just want to play wherever the competition is in front of them. They'll play, like, like how that team plays. Um, so, yeah, like, and looking at it, if we just focus on the Western Conference, right? I'm sorry, the Eastern Conference. The Brooklyn Nets are sixth. 35 and 28. Like I said, I don't believe they're going to. They have a, a tough stretch, like a very tough stretch. I think that, I believe they still got to go past like the Western Conference. So they have a, a tough stretch ahead of them. Now their next game is against the Hornets. So that's not going to be too crazy. That's definitely not going to be hard at all. Then they face Houston. So expect them to be probably 37 and 28. Okay. Then they have to face teams that want to make it to the playoffs. Okay. So they have Milwaukee, Minnesota, Denver. OKC is probably a win. Then you have Sacramento, light the beam. Denver, Cleveland, Cleveland, Miami. So that's all the way until March 23rd. And then, sorry, Miami uh, is 25th of March. So until you reach 25th of March, this Brooklyn Nets team is, is they, may, they, may be, they may go all the way to 500. Because they're 35 and 28. I can predict them probably being like a 38 and 38 at, at that time. Right? So they can still have a chance of being the 60 because they have such a, a large... Um, lead and they still have uh, games against like houston atlanta's gonna want to beat them utah is probably getting now i'm going down brooklyn at schedule like houston loss atlanta needs will need to win more so they Atlanta that's a win utah is a good team i don't know what's gonna happen there they may tank minnesota may want to jockey for playoff position and then they face detroit and orlando those are probably wins for for brooklyn you're hoping their their losses you're hoping detroit will fight uh doing casey can do the raptors or the miami heat a solid that may not happen and then there's Philly, and Philly at that time, unless they're jockeying position, they may want to rest because the argument could be that 
you know, if Brooklyn does play six, that's Philly's position. And Philly wants to probably face the Brooklyn Nets in a seven-game series. But I just don't see the Nets making it. Uh, they're going to be a playing uh, team. And honestly, just for competitive reasons and just for watching the game reasons, you'd want them to. I think I don't want to see them. Honestly, I don't want to see them be succeed. And I like kind of the whole bunch of wings, lineups, and blah, blah, blah that they're doing. But I, I'd rather not see that. I'd rather, I'd rather see something different, right? I, I'd definitely rather see something different. What makes it also sucky with the Brooklyn Nets in Toronto is that Brooklyn won four games against the Raptors. This is when they had Kyrie and Kevin Durant. Once again, I wish they just traded Kevin Durant much earlier. I wish they traded him much earlier so we didn't have to play these guys four times. And the worst part about it is we put them all in the beginning of the season. It wasn't spread out or anything. If it was spread out, maybe that would have been better too. But it was not. So you kind of take what you can get. And with the Raptors schedule, what makes it hard is that you uh, have one of the hardest schedules in the league. So even if the Raptors don't end up six, you're hoping they, they're like seventh or eighth. Um, but to me, you go for six. You definitely go for six because you, you do not want to face the Boston Celtics or the Milwaukee Bucks. Those who are the best teams in the league, not, not the best teams in you know an Eastern Conference. Not not just that, they're both the best teams in the league. Boston's seven, probably the best. Milwaukee's overall, you know, depth and defense of a defensive ability is crazy, right? So like I said, you, as much as I like Brooklyn and I like what they're doing, I think like. This would just be a dream if Brooklyn Nets, thank you so much for coming out, but they'll lose in the play into some one of the teams. Um, and then Miami, my, Miami versus a, a Boston would be kind of fun. Um, and then Toronto versus Philly would be fun. Go New York and Cleveland seems to be match made right there. And then maybe the AC would be in Atlanta against the Bucks. Maybe they may sque- uh, squeak out a win. Um, but yeah, I feel like Milwaukee and Boston may have some five five game series is on their hand. But the way the league is, I'm telling you, it's, it's like, I'm hoping we see some like seven game series. I'm hoping we see like three or four of them. Like I like a long series. I like when two teams are just like averagely competing against each other. Look at the Western Conference. It it changes. The first three don't change. Also just crazy how like top three teams are Denver, Memphis, Sacramento. The league offices are hating that. They definitely probably want a Phoenix, Golden State or LA. Uh, to be one of the top teams, but that's not how it works. But, like, the Western Conference playoffs are going to be crazy. Like, if the Lakers can make it, they're a 7th or 8th seed. Arguably enough, they're going to be favored. Um, I'm hoping the Lakers make it to a 7th seed. I'm really hoping. They're only two games, or two and a half games behind Minnesota, and they just lost to Minnesota. So, it's going to be probably harder to, to be there. The Jazz, I don't know what they're doing. I'm not sure if they want to win games. Uh, same with the Pelicans. Like, I know the Pelicans definitely want to win games. It's... No Zion has really hurt them. They have not finished the season well, like at all. They've not. They've actually been pretty bad, and I think a lot of people are predicting a better season out of them. So that's kind of unfortunate overall. Um, but all in all, like this Raptors week was good. I'm hoping that the Raptors can be a, a, a seven seed, a six seed would be my ultimate dream. So you're really hoping the Brooklyn Nets just go on like a complete losing streak. But there's no incentive to. They don't have a draft pick, I don't believe, this year. So uh, they don't have their own draft pick, I should say. So well, there's no incentive for them to tank. And uh, Mikael Bridges, they came back from 28 points. When a team comes back from 28 points, they're not looking to, like, lose. Like, they're not looking as a – they're, like, they're not – they're not, like, here, like, oh, yep, yeah, we're just backing down. And I like their squad. Like, they, they have – the thing is they have the length – to go against Philadelphia, to stop a Tobias Harris, to to slow down a Harden. Um, they can't really stop it in B. Yes, Claxton can try, but B can probably score 50. But I don't know. This is also like a Mikel Bridges coming out party. This guy's going to demand. Like, he's, he, it sucks. His contract's going to be so good because of, you know, what he's done. But, uh, uh, well, sorry, his contract going to be so undervalued because of what he's done, I should say. And, and that's what's kind of funny, but that's that's a that's a good team. Uh, sorry, just on, on a quick side note, I didn't know the Raptors were twenty and thirteen at home. I did not know that. Better home record than like the Brooklyn Nets and uh, New York Knicks, so that's kind of 
It's kind of crazy. I didn't. I didn't. And the away record is pretty shitty. But a lot of teams away record. Look at the Cleveland uh, Cavaliers. Their away record is pretty trash too. So not everyone's gonna have like that's the whole point. Like home is supposed to be um, where it's easier. So it, that makes sense. But all in all, like you know, uh, now we finally got the the answer with the starting unit. It's going to be Pirtle starting. Um, Gary Trent comes off the bench, but as everyone knows, it doesn't matter if you come off the bench or start. Um, what and then some of the players, of course, they for them it probably matters. But as long as you are finishing the game, and Gary Trent had like twenty six points last game. I uh, didn't have a really good uh, game beforehand, but that's what you're looking for. We want to see who our closing unit be, and if that's our closing unit, then that's good. <laughs> that's what we want, right? That's what we want to see. So. I like that closing unit. I think Barnes playing that kind of five. Uh, I think he guarded Porzingis pretty well. He was a pretty good five. Now, not, now this line is not always going to work out. You're always going to kind of have to probably switch offense, defense a little bit with a Gary Trent. But Gary hits timely buckets. I think, of course, uh, so does Fred Van Vliet. That's all you need. I always say all you need is timely buckets. Um, I would love to see Pascal become more assertive. But I feel like right now, not that he's in a downward for his points, but you can tell that, like, he's, I don't know what he's gearing up for, but right now he, he's just trying to make everyone, make the overall team just be better. He's still shooting on the same and everything else. And I think OG, overall, he'll get better. He'll be fine. I think the hand injury is, is obviously affecting him. So we kind of just go with that, with the hand injury. Um, but in saying that, I think this Raptor team, you, you're, the thing is, Raptor fans have to realize, you are also playing teams who would like to make the playoffs. It's not just you that wants to make the playoffs. Washington would also like to make the playoffs. They're also trying really hard. So sometimes I feel like we lose that as fans. We're like, yeah, we want our team to win. Yeah, no, I get it. I, 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 want, I would want the team to win too. But all in all, like, as bad as you think it can, it can be, like, you know, all these other teams want to win just as much as you want to win. There's not a team that wants to win more than you or out win. No, no, all these teams want to win. So if all these teams want to win, like, they're going to try really hard. They really are. They're, they're, they're just going to, like, Washington wants to make it to the playoffs. They want to make it to the play. Like, they want to make the playoffs first. They want to make the playoffs. Like, all these teams have dreams of, this, of the same thing. So they're all gunning for the same thing. So as much as we want the Raptors to show up and try hard, all these teams are doing the same thing. Yes, the Raptors go through stretches where they're not scoring. That's why sometimes their first – Player two is kind of what they did when they had a JV. It's just you push it to the post to uh to two guys, either Pascal or a Scotty. Pass to a Pascal or Scotty for an easy like layup, easy uh uh um an easy play. That's what you did. So then it kind of gets the flow going. Now you get that first point in. That's what you kind of do. I, I that's how I think. That's my thought process. If you want everyone to kind of get the juices flowing, you get that first basket in. Because you don't get that first basket, everyone's kind of like, oh, God, we need to score, we need to score, we need to score. Mind you, it's basketball, so someone's eventually going to score. There's going to be a missed opportunity. Someone's going to hit a shot. It just happens. So but so you don't want to see the kind of, like, opposite where guys are kind of getting too nervous and, and everyone's kind of like, okay, we're down seven. They were down seven this game, too. So it, it, it's, it happens, you know? It definitely happens. Um, but that's what Raptor fans should know. The, 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 there's more. Like, there's teams that want to make it. Denver is going to, you know, they're not playing on on Sunday. All right? So they're, they're going to go. Do they, do they play Monday? I just feel like I think the Raptors, Raptors play on Monday. Could go Monday, Wednesday. Yeah, so Denver, you know, the way it looks like, Denver has a lot of games off. Uh, they're going to be well. And they're going to be at home. And they, like I said, they have the MVP. And when you have the MVP, like, that's good things. That is good things. So the MVP, is, he's going to try his, his, his ass off. And he's been getting triple doubles consistently. So I'm expect, you know, this uh, this league game, and it's not easy, not, it's not pretty. So as much as we want to say, like, you know, the Raptors have a chance of winning, the first thing Denver now gets, all you want to do is to compete. Denver still, Denver wants to win too. Like Denver wants, to, like I said, they have the the MVP. They want to win just as much as anybody else. Not one team wants to win more than the other. That's not how it works. So, you know, the Denver Denver's a good squad. Now going back to the the two uh, to two LA games. I don't know. I think they could beat the 
the Lakers. Um, I think they can beat the Lakers. I wonder if the Lakers have a back to back. Quick check. The Lakers do not have a back to back, so they'll be kind of fresh. Normally they play on Thursday, so I just thought they would have a back to back, but uh, that's not the case. I want to see if the Clippers are uh, play on Tuesday because if they have a back to back, they are not playing some guys. They do not have a back to back, so they they will be playing. Um, I don't know if maybe Kawhi may play, maybe not. I don't know. Those 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 are the weird ones. So you may get a healthy Kawhi and Paul George, um, which it is what it is. Like that's still a, that's a tricky. It's a really good team. So let's not. You know, and they're, they're a team that, yes, they've been kind of average and, and all that stuff. But I expect them to turn around just as much as anyone else would, right? Uh, they're, they're, they're so average. They're like 15 and 15 at home. They're just, I don't know. There's, not, there's only so much you can expect from them. Um, but everyone's still probably afraid to face them in the playoffs because they know Kawhi and PG are still a duo that are pretty scary. <laughs> Are pretty scary. So the Raptors have a tough road. They have a tough road ahead of them. You know, it's all and none of it's at home. Like that the thing. None of it's at home. All the way. You would love, love, of course, every, any team would say this. You would love to go three and That may not happen. You know? So I'm gonna hope for a two and one. I'm hoping for a two and one. But all in all, I'm hoping that everyone else just loses. I'm hoping Brooklyn Nets lose a bunch of games. So I'm hoping for them to completely lose. Today, like um, um, as I record, uh, there's teams like Atlanta and Miami playing. I hope th these teams lose as well. Uh, but it's funny. A lot of these teams are facing each other. So as much as you want one team to lose, the other team has a chance of winning, right? So, you know, as much as I want Atlanta to lose, I also want Miami. But if they're facing each other, I don't even know who I want more. Probably Miami to, to win more. I just, I'm not a fan of Atlanta. So, yeah. And I think Atlanta has the... I think they have the, 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 the season series against the Raptors. I, I think they play one more time. And when you play one more time, then that will probably be the season series. That that game will probably be uh, really important. No, they don't even face them again. Don't face Atlanta. Look at the schedule now. They don't face Atlanta again. So, yeah, I think Atlanta has the season series. That is unfortunate that Atlanta has a season series. And, and I'm pretty sure the Raptors needed that game. Yeah, yeah. So things aren't looking great. They're not really looking great right now for the Raptors. So, I don't know. They, um, and I mean, it's not looking great for the playoff positioning. I think other things are looking fine for the Raptors. But the playoff positioning is not looking as perfect as you would want it to look. But that's really it. I, 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 there's not much to say with the Raptors this week. Um, it was, it was, you face tough teams. So, and, and I talked about John Morant. So I didn't want to go too much of a, a non-Raptor a um, conversation, but you know, you are two and one this week. Like I said, you're ten and three in the last since February first. You're ten and three. That's pretty good, man. And honestly, you can go further. You can go further. And after the loss against Boston, because they had like three games that were just close, the Milwaukee one, which uh, I swear it was the overtime one, but I guess not. Um, but Minnesota and the Boston. So even after the New York on the twenty second of January. You guys have won like fourteen games and lost like four or five games. Like this Raptors team's actually won a lot more recently. We forget that, but don't forget. Uh, it's a good team, but it's I don't know. Um, even the rotation. Going back to the fact that Gary's on the bench, you know, Gary coming off the bench is, is good for the squad. They they went about like ten deep. I like the thought of everyone who played. I, I think it was it was like that's who should play against Washington. Like that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, you know, Gary's going to get, see, Gary got 35 minutes. Like, Gary's going to get those minutes. Jakob is here to, like, be the guy that we've been missing. Um, but I like the fact that, you know, Precious, uh, Boucher, Barton, uh, and Thad Young, like, I don't know what the playoff lineups are going to look like. I, I'm, I'm thinking Nick is probably not going to play Thad. Um, but I like Bill Barton. He's literally everywhere in the stat sheet, you know, played for 13 and it's hard because also you just want guys to be open for three, shoot the three, and hopefully hit 37, 38%. So if you can consistently do that, then there's no problem there. But yeah, tell me what you guys think. Like and subscribe. I'll talk to you again very soon. Peace.